Welcome back to another Moto Bob video where you join me in the studio again today with this incredible bike. It's the new Indian Pursuit. What an impressive looking bike and it's got absolutely bags of features. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you my favorite things about it and then a few things that might be improved. But before we get started, a massive thanks to Pando Moto for sponsoring the channel. They make all of the riding gear that I'm using in this video, and they've also got some other clever products on their website that I definitely encourage you to check out. Recently, I've been wearing their base layer products, and what they do is allow you to wear regular non-motorcycle clothing over the top, but they're abrasion resistant and they take armor, and so they'll keep you safe on the bike. Perfect for town riding and commuting, especially when the weather's hot, and so I've linked to their website down in the description where you can find out more. A massive thanks to Pando Moto again for their support. Now look, my number one favorite thing about this bike is the engine. It's a little bit different to what you might expect in a big American Tourer like this because it's their new Power Plus engine. Well, relatively new. I think it came out about two or three years ago in the Challenger. And it's a little bit more modern. It's liquid cooled. It likes to rev up a bit. And so it's got really good torque as you'd expect, but also plenty of power as well. The performance is one side of what I enjoy about it. Definitely it really does go a lot quicker than you might expect, especially if you put it in the sport riding mode. But I think actually the thing I really appreciated was the smoothness of this engine. It feels more refined than the Thunderstroke or something like the Milwaukee 8 from Harley. And so for me, it perfectly suits a bike that you're gonna be wanting to do big mileage on. The other thing I was really impressed with on this bike was the sound of it. It was much louder than I expected. <laughs> I don't know if that's partly the sort of fairing reflecting a little bit of the intake noise back at you, but when you do get on the gas, it really does have a nice satisfying thudding V-twin sound and uh, even with the stock system, it sounds great. Now, much like the engine is more modern than some of the other Indians, you'll also find plenty of little gadgets and features across this bike. One of them that's massively welcome on a bike like this is the electronically adjustable preload. So you can go into the settings with the TFT dash, either with the switch gear or you can use it as a touch screen and then you can quickly without tools set the preload appropriately for solo riding, two up riding, two up with luggage, solo with luggage and there's also the option to fine tune it. So if you are switching between different load configurations on a regular basis it just makes it that little bit quicker. Now if you're doing big miles on a bike like this you really do want good wind protection and this is top notch. You've got an electronically adjustable windscreen and I was thinking it might not be that great because I had the Super Chief recently, Super Chief Limited, and it had a similar rounded shape to the top of the windscreen and I actually got quite bad buffeting on that bike. So you've got that added convenience with the electronic adjustment on this windscreen and when it's in its fully up position it really is quite high and you're properly looking through the screen. Perhaps that's one thing that sort of cures the buffeting. There's also a vent cut into the bottom of the screen which I assume is to help relieve a little bit of the pressure behind the screen. And then also the rest of the bodywork is pretty massive and you've got little deflectors down here. So it really is a nice snug place to sit. Now the other thing that helps is these louvers down by your legs. I was really surprised by how warm your legs can get. Even if you're traveling at motorway speeds, they really do protect your legs and then you benefit from the heat of the engine. And honestly, on some of the days that I was riding when it was nice and sunny, I was starting to get a little uncomfortable. So it's really nice that they've added these extra vents that you can either adjust by hand or I've found that you can just do it with your feet if you wanna keep your hands on the bars. And they just let a little bit more air through to cool your legs off, but it's really comprehensive wind protection on this bike. There are a few other things that make this bike super comfortable for me as well, starting with the saddle. I mean, it looks brilliant. The finish is great on this bike. So the diamond stitch in here and the Indian logo, and there's a little bit of like piping around the edge there. It really does help lift the whole look of the bike, but it's also nice and low. I mean, it's a big, heavy bike. So you do wanna get your feet down. There's plenty of cushioning as well. So over distance, I found it nice and squishy. It's nice and wide at the back and then you've got a big scoop so it really does hold you in place nice and snug and then front and rear you've got heated seats so you can do it through the dash or you get 
independent controls down on the side of the seat there. Now, personally, I haven't done any miles on the pillion seat myself, but it's a proper throne on the back there. Similarly, squishy and wide for the passenger as it is for the rider, and then also a beautiful backrest there with its own speakers so you can hear the music coming out. Another big comfort factor for me is the length of those floorboards. It really does give you a lot of room to move your legs around so you can stretch them right out in front of you, or you can move them to the back for a little bit more of a sporty riding position. And just all in all, the wind protection, the riding position for me is like, proper all day comfortable. It's also not a bad handling bike for the size of it. They've tried to make it a little more sporty than your average Tourer. So you've got upside down forks at the front, you've got radially mounted four pop Brembo brakes. And although you've got a ride within the constraints of like the length of it, the size of it, the weight of it, it's still a lot of fun on long flowing roads. Yesterday I did about four hours riding around South Wales and it was a mix of motorway, some single track roads, which this isn't great for, but then those nice long flowing A roads. And it really is that sweet spot of like super comfortable, feels really special to ride, but then enough performance there to make it fun on the right roads. Another big plus on this bike is the full luggage. I mean, you've got plenty of capacity. You can fit a couple of lids in the top box as well. It's beautifully styled. It really does suit the look of the bike. It's got central lock-in, which you can either do with the key or there's a button down in the fairing there. The side cases are top loading, which is a plus for me. You've got a rack on the back here as well if you wanna strap some more stuff onto the top. And so it's exactly what you'd want from a big touring bike like this. Now onto some of the tech, and the next one is that the speakers go up to 11. Also the ride command system that you've got here, the infotainment system, you know, it really is pretty good. I like how they've styled it. It looks a little bit classic with some of the graphics and the dials, but actually it's really easy to navigate. There's plenty of functionality in there. And also having the touchscreen feature makes it really quick and easy if you can't figure it out with the switch gear. The other thing is you've got the option to use CarPlay. So there's a a phone stash down here with a USB port. Just stick your phone in there, plug your phone in. You've got to have a Bluetooth headset connected, but once you've got that set up, you can get all your favorite apps right there on the built-in dash. That's probably my preference. I prefer to use like Google Maps or Waze to navigate. It's nice to have Spotify for your music or some podcasts. And also you can choose to direct the audio either to your headset or to the built-in speakers. That said, it is quite nice to have the ability to fall back on the built-in navigation system. You know, if you don't have your phone or the cable to hand for some reason, it's just great to have it already built in. And I've used this system both on this bike and some of the Chiefs, and it really does work pretty well. The only thing I will say is that I ran into a few problems with it this time. It's the first time it's happened, but I got this error message. So yeah, that would be the first point for improvement on this bike. I'm not sure what the cause was, whether it was a signal issue or perhaps resetting the bike somehow would have cleared it. But you know, when you just want to get home and you start getting error messages, bit annoying. Secondly, it's got cruise control, which is great, but it's on the right hand switch gear. I don't quite get why manufacturers do that. In fact, on my FTR, which is my long termer from Indian, it's over here on the left. So you can hold your speed and then just set it with your left thumb. Now you do kind of get used to it and there's a bit of a technique to it, but Personally, I prefer it just over here on the left hand side. And then last up, you've got the weight of it and the size of it, and then also the price. I mean, it's pretty heavy physically, but also heavy on the wallet. I think if you compare it to the closest competition, things like the BMW R18 Transcontinental or the equivalent from the Harley lineup, it doesn't look too bad. They're all big bikes. And of course they're expensive because they're beautifully finished. But I think if you look outside of that American style heavyweight touring market, you can find bikes with similar functionality, perhaps better performance, similar long range capabilities, and yet they'll come in a fair bit lighter and also a fair bit cheaper. Things like the BMW R1250 RT. But that is a bit of a utilitarian way to look at it. And I don't really think this is a utilitarian purchase. It's an incredible bike to look at. It really does look special and it's just the same to ride. It's a brilliant riding experience. It's weighty, so it gives it that sort of cushiness and it's got all the features and all the finish. So I don't think it's really a bike you buy solely with your head. It's a bit of a heart purchase as well. A massive thanks for watching this video today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do let me know what you think of this bike down in the comments. And if you're new here and you wanna watch more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.